Tony, I wanted to ask a question that I think will take the conversation in an interesting direction and just show even with all of your years of experience, how you've continued to develop. Is there anything that even just between last summer and this summer, you're thinking about differently in terms of your training or, or changing? Or do you feel like at this point, your formulas, you're, you're pretty dialed in and there's not much changing with what you're doing? I think the formula stays has stayed the same. Um, the, the things that I see, like in my track program, and I'd be the same way if I was football. What, once you're going down the right path and, and <laughs> you're feeding the cats, you're recreating the athletes, you're attracting athletes, you are specific with your coaching, your general in the weight room, and your extreme and speed training. Once you have those things, it's really a matter of doing those things better. And as a coach, I think we can always do things better. And it's really no different than performing as an athlete. Uh, the things that I personally have to work on are things like, like fitness. I'm 65, you know, so, so being fit and, and trying to get to sleep before 10 o'clock at night. And, you know, after a lifetime of staying up as late as I could, um, just, being the best version of myself every day uh, so that I can perform as a coach and, and then to lock in on, on what we're doing and do it better. And one of the, one of the things that, that personally that I've really worked on in the last couple of years is to become uh, uh, somebody that wanted to come early and stay late, which used to be like, all coaches would preach that and everything, but I got to the point where, yeah, I, I wasn't doing that. And so, so what I try to do now is, is come early enough to make as many one-on-one -on -one contacts with kids as I can. And then afterwards to stick around and once again, one-on-one -on -one contacts, talk, you know, ask a kid how something's going and then say, tell me more. I, I love, I love those three words. Tell me more. And I think that developing those personal relationships with athletes is just win-win. Yeah, I love that. So still coming early and staying late, but maybe being more intentional about what you're doing with that time and why you're doing it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, just in your own development as a coach, is there anything, uh, even just since last summer, that coming into this summer, you, you are thinking about differently and doing differently in your training? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the way we've changed things over the last couple of years, um, we used to bring kids in on Monday. Um, we would go, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, but with, uh, you know, so much travel, AAU basketball, travel baseball, uh, we've moved that really to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for a couple of reasons. It gives Monday another day of rest, especially if those kids a lot of times are playing their first baseball game on Thursday night. They play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then, you know, they have to come back when it gives them a day of rest. I think that's key. I think sometimes um, always thinking that the first day of the week is the best week to speed train or do max velocity, um, being a little bit more mindful about what kids are coming back from, uh, switching sometimes because of how low low volume we are even in the summer. Uh, sometimes we'll, we'll move that and, and we may look to it a little bit more, move those max velocity days to Thursday. Um, so that Monday or Tuesday can be more of an acceleration day, Wednesday being a change of direction day leading into a speed day on Thursday. So I think always continue to be mindful of, you know, what they're coming from. I think sometimes as football coaches, especially, we see the summer as, you know, this is our time to, to get them ready for the season. And we're not mindful of they're still playing basketball, at least at my small school, they're still playing basketball, they're still playing baseball, and they're doing all these different things. And we have to take that into account in terms of what we're going to do. I can't control what they do, you know, when they're not with me, but I can totally control what they do when I see them first thing on Tuesday. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And I think it is a good segue here because you hit on rest and just thinking more about rest and the importance of how you structure that. Um, we had one of our attendees ask, uh, question that kind of ties into that and this could be for both of you but it's how much rest between the season and summer training should be had so how much of a gap do you guys feel like there needs to be there i would say that that my my view of days off has really changed 
uh, over my 43 years of, of coaching. I think that coaches have always understood that the day after a game needs to be a day off. But one of the crazy things in football, especially, is if if you make practices harder than games on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, like my dad used to say, we're going to make practice so hard that the games are easy. Well, if you're not, if, if you are burning the stake on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then, then you are not performing on any of those days. You, if you have no days off, um, I suggest a, a, uh, um, a wave like practice, uh, uh, plan where, where you have performance days and then not off days, but fundamental days where, where you're trying to really conserve. It's, it's almost like a perform, a, a, a fundamental day is like a pregame. So you have a performance day, which is like game day, and then a fundamental day and then a performance day and then a fundamental day. And then of course the game is a, is a performance. Um, but, but I'll just tell this story that we have a 19 week track season. And I give my kids eight days off for spring break. Uh, those are color-coded green. Um, fundamental days are color-coded uh, uh, yellow, and performance days are, are, are color-coded red. And, um, and I'm uncomfortable during those eight days. I, I'm a coach. I, I, I was brought up like, you got to outwork people. You know, winners outwork losers. Uh, stars outwork the guys that didn't make it. That's why they made it. That's why the other guys didn't make it. And so deep down, I have all these crazy feelings in me because deep down, I'm a traditional coach. And, and I have to fight those off because every year, our first track meet after those eight days off have mind-blowing performances. Our kids, we do not grow as we work. We... We do not heal as we work. We only grow and heal when we sleep and when we have days off. And one of the really hard things in, as a track coach these days is that so many of my football track kids are doing, instead of having a day off, they're doing seven on seven. Instead of having the next day off, they're going to some personal trainer who cooks them. I mean, just just drives them like crazy and then the dad loves it and all that kind of stuff and so they're never growing they're never healing they'll always get injured they will not perform well and so so i'm uh i mean i'll throw this out there right now i'm not so sure we should not have um a four-day week in football that, that would be mind-blowing for football coaches but to actually practice on monday and tuesday take wednesday off practice on Thursday and play the game on Friday. Um, no football coaches are going to do that because they'd probably get fired first time they lose a game. But I think if you really care about performance, you start really, really understanding what days off does to your, uh, your people. And I think this is a beautiful segue to Brad, who does his work on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in the summer. Yeah. Um, so to answer a couple parts of that, uh, we just had our girls state track meet last week. We had a we had a sectional the week before on a Thursday. We gave our girls Friday, Saturday, Sunday completely off. Uh, we came back Monday and we were really fast, uh, max velocity work. We did handoff work and and whether they were in the hurdles, a little bit of position work, and then uh, we ended up setting season record in the four by two, and then our we broke our school record in the four by one. Um, you know, after three days off running. 4991, which at the 1A level uh, is very fast in, in Illinois. Um, our previous was 50.66. So between our conference track meet, we ran 5123. Um, sorry, at sectional, between sectional prelims drop into 50.66, and then the finals, you know, we dropped like 1.3 seconds. Um, we did the same thing with our guys. Uh, we gave them actually four days off. So we had a sectional on Wednesday, we gave them Thursday, Friday as I was at the girls state tournament, uh, some guys came in and jumped and did a few things. And then, you know, we gave them the weekend off. It was graduation. Three of our guys are seniors. They had graduation. We came back yesterday and, and the guys were excited and they were ready. They're, they're pumped for the state meet, you know, it's to be seen yet how we'll perform obviously. Um, but I see the same thing, you know, the, you know, the question about summer training, 
So some guys are wrapping up some stuff in my athletic PE class right now. I won't see him again until June 3rd. Uh, our track guys will, you know, the, the eight guys or nine guys that are going to state, they'll finish Friday, Saturday, hopefully. I won't see him again until the following Tuesday. We always run really fast on that first Tuesday where the kids have had a break. They're not quite into their basketball. They're not into all their baseball stuff. They've had the first 10 days off they've had in a long, long time from training. They will be really fast. So, you know, I think the answer there is a week to two weeks if you can, um, especially if you're training year round. I know some coaches want to kill them in the summer and so forth, but we're fine with giving the kids about 10 days off right around this time. Awesome stuff there. I was going to say when Tony was uh, making his controversial statement about uh, the football training schedule, I was like, Brad, any objections? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and, and then as far as football, yeah. So when we get in the playoffs, you know, we, we already we, we sprint on Mondays. We don't take the field on any Monday, but we get in the playoffs and our games are on Saturday. Monday is an off day for us. So we get in the first round of the playoffs. We played on Friday night. We find out who we're playing Saturday. Obviously, we're off Saturday. We're off Sunday. We're off Monday. And we don't even then we watch film on Tuesday. We go from walking off the game field on week nine Friday to take in the field and helmets only the following Wednesday, we're not even in shoulder pads again for almost seven days, six days without putting the shoulder pads on between week nine and the first round. And that freaks some people out. Um, but we are who we are at that point. Um, you know, obviously, hopefully we're healthy, but we're trying to continue to stay healthy. We're trying to stay fresh and we're not reinventing anything. And we try to get our guys in and out. You know, I know some guys are, well, we got to finish on the lights because the time change. The way we set our stuff up is we're done before it gets dark. And if you know anything about Illinois, you know, it's getting dark by 430. And, but we're out of there and our kids are home. And that's our number one concern at that point in time is game plan and preparation, which is more mental than it is physical. Um, and then, you know, making sure we, we're still working on our basic stuff. Um, but we're, we're not going to keep them out there for more than an hour and a half tops and, and hopefully an hour 20 as we get into the postseason.